Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Robert passed the story along to me from KTWO, which is K2 Radio, Wyoming's radio station. And it has to do with civil asset forfeiture, and it's a win for the guy who had his money taken. $470,000. Now, some people are going to hear the story and go, well, maybe that's one of the guys that shouldn't have gotten his money back. But, but, anytime someone gets their money back, we've got to cheer for them to make up for all the times that other people didn't get their money back. Wyoming Supreme Court rules that the state must return $470,000 seized in traffic stop. Zach Spat wrote the story. And what's interesting about this is it's a legal technical issue that comes into play. The Wyoming Supreme Court ordered the state to return $470,000 taken during a traffic stop in 2013. (laughs) So here we are, seven years later, the guy might get his money back. Uh, This is in um, Wyoming because the state took too long to start their forfeiture proceedings. So again, the complaint is it took too long. And yes, we're arguing about how long it took seven years later. That's how the wheels of justice turn slowly. Uh, According to court filings, the state took 270 days before they started forfeiture proceedings against the cash of Robert Miller, and they seized that money from him during a traffic stop. Uh, He was pulled over in November of 2013, and the state began its forfeiture proceedings in August of 2014. They waited 270 days. Now, here's the story. Miller had rented a car to drive from Reno to his home in Illinois when stopped by a Wyoming Highway Patrol state trooper for speeding. The trooper invited Miller to sit in the passenger's seat of his patrol vehicle while he filled out the citation. At some point, Miller agreed to let the trooper search his vehicle. Some might note mistake number one. But I digress. During the search, the trooper pulled back the carpet lining in the trunk of Miller's vehicle and found Manila envelopes filled with cash, at which point Miller asked for a lawyer. Now, one of the things I have people tell me is they say, Steve, if a cop wants to search my car, he can knock himself out. He ain't going to find nothing. Believe it or not, if they find nothing, they're still going to probably damage your vehicle because here they are peeling the carpet lining back on a rental car. So you can imagine what they're going to do to your car when they're looking for stuff. Peeling stuff back, dismantling stuff, unloading stuff. I've spoken to people who said that they got their car searched and everything was removed from the car and put on the side of the road. The cop goes, hi, I found nothing. See ya, have a nice day. Got in his car and drove off. Well, they had to repack their vehicle at the side of the road. Uh, The trooper, according to court documents, found more manila envelopes containing a total of $470,000 in the rear quarter panels of the car. Again, a very extensive search. The trooper eventually discovered that Miller may have been connected to a case involving LSD in California. Later that night, a Wyoming DCI agent contacted the Wyoming Attorney General's office and was given permission to seize the money. So that night, somebody in Wyoming's legal entity said, yep, seize that money. So months later, the state filed a complaint in court seeking the forfeiture of the money. The complaint alleged that the money was subject to forfeiture because it was, quote, used or intended for use in the delivery or receipt of controlled substances or was otherwise used to facilitate a violation of the Wyoming Controlled Substances Act. So that's their thinking. It was being used or may have been used or may have been intended somehow. But, of course, the allegation is that they think that it may have been involved in something in California, but the guy came from Reno and was going to Illinois. So, Miller denied that the money was subject to forfeiture. His defenses included that the money was derived from legitimate activities and that the state failed to begin the proceedings promptly. So, he said, look, the money was mine. It was legitimate. Number two, they started too late. During the legal proceedings, attorneys for the state offered to give him back 10% of the money if he would relinquish the rest. So for those of you who who, who wonder when I say this is all about the money, that right there proves it. They actually say, we'll drop the charges if you let us keep 90%, we'll give you 10. Well, if it's actually criminally derived, why would you roll over that easily? 
just take it to court and win because you'll, you know, the whole idea that you're going to negotiate over this just shows you it's about the money. Miller filed a motion to dismiss, which a district court denied because he had not demonstrated the non-existence of a material fact or that his right to due process had been violated. And then he appealed that ruling up. So again, remember that he had not demonstrated the non-existence of a material fact. Yes, you've got to prove or disprove the negative. Prove you're not guilty. Prove the money's not guilty. Don't blame the money. (laughs) Ultimately, the Wyoming Supreme Court ruled that the state failed to promptly begin forfeiture proceedings in violation of Wyoming law and Miller's right to due process. And again, getting back to due process, people ask me all the time, what is due process? I don't want to get into it. Books have been written on it. Due process is often condensed down to simply the idea that you have the right to know what the charges are against you and the right to defend yourself. But there's more to it than that because due process is other aspects in the Constitution. And everyone knows, for instance, you're due a speedy trial. You have the right to a speedy trial. And, and the idea of a speedy trial, obviously, if the civil asset forfeiture issue is being looked at in its technicalities, the trial is actually involving the money, not you. Um, you would step in and try to defend the money, in essence. But the idea that there's going to be a speedy trial simply means that that we're going to adjudicate this. There's going to be a court looking at this and ruling on this in a speedy fashion. And most people would say, the police pull you over and seize $470,000 in cash from you and say, yes, we're doing this because this money's being used in the furtherance of or the actual you know, criminality of something. And, and therefore, we're doing this. The idea that it takes them 270 days just to file the charges? Well, what did you have at the roadside when you took the money? Didn't, didn't you have a case then? Because you, if, if you didn't have a case, that means they're just seizing money and making up stuff later. They must have had a case at the moment they seized the money. The same way they've got to have a case when they arrest you. If you get arrested, they, they are making the allegation that, you know, we have a reason to arrest you and we think we've got a basis to prosecute you for a crime. Okay, and so if, if, if the state actually said we've arrested somebody, you want to make up something later? <laughs> Wouldn't go over very well. And obviously, that's what they're doing here. We seize the money now, and we spend oh, I don't know, nine months trying to figure out whether or not we've got a case. And nine months later, after offering the guy a deal where we'll give you back some of your money if you let us keep the other part, it it kind of it kind of looks weak. Okay, so I think. A bigger issue that people often have is they say, Steve, how could it possibly be due process when we have things in the Constitution that say, for instance, that you can't have things, your property taken from you without due process? And and in that setting, you'd think due process means that there's going to be some legal basis for the taking. Uh, And then, of course, you know, there's, there's a bunch of other problems here. Many states are now taking steps to say, you cannot do civil asset forfeiture just in and of itself. You've got to have a crime associated with it, a conviction maybe, or other other legal safeguards in there. So the old school civil asset forfeiture where a sheriff just pulls you over and goes, eh, I'm going to take this. I think it's illegal. to take it and then go buy daiquiri machines with it or something. Um, that's going to go by the wayside, I think. Um, and it's, it is a bit at a time here and there. But unfortunately, all the activity we've seen has been at the state level. States have been saying, we're going to fix this. The feds are still doing it. And until somebody steps up and says, hey, we're going to fix this at the federal level, uh, you know, it's, it's still going to happen. So again, this is one of those things where we see bright spots popping up and little small victories, which is also a really, really cool song by Faith No More, small victory. But when I see something like this, and the guy gets the money back. It's 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 a good thing. If he was involved in something to do with allegations of LSD in California, I don't know. I don't know. He wasn't he wasn't convicted of that. Apparently, the only action in the last seven years involving this man was his money. So the idea that this guy had the money taken from him in 2013, and the court just now rules that he can have his money back. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> justice delayed, justice denied, but it does get the money back. So there you go. Questions, comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law.
Old dogs care about you, even when you make mistakes.